Hi guys. I'm gonna read a really special book next. It's called Nokomo, A Thanksgiving Celebration. This book is about the feast that the Narragansett tribe had to celebrate their harvest long before we would celebrate what is now called Thanksgiving. There are a lot of words in this book from the Narragansett people's language and I'm really going to try my best to say them correctly, but chances are I won't get them all right. So, you know, we are going to try. We'll prop this one up. Again, it might not be perfect, but this is a long book. Katantowit, the creator, is pleased with his people. They have cared well for his gifts of corn and bean and squash. In the early warmth of Saquon, when the oak leaves were the size of a mouse's ear, the people planted. All through the long, hot days of Quaquasquan, the growing time, the people tended the creator's gifts, keeping weeds from their feet, carrying water to quench their thirst, and shooing away mischievous Kokant, the crow. New frost lies thick on the fields at dawn, and the winged ones pass overhead in great numbers, calling out their goodbyes. It is Tequantikiswush, the moon of the falling leaves. The creator's gifts have been harvested, dried, and tucked away in Akanash in the bosom of Earth Mother. They will provide for the people all through the long, cold months to come. The long, cold months of Peponi. It is time, now, time for the people to come together, together to give thanks. Nicomo. From villages far and near they come, their moccasin ass treating silently on the footsteps of the grandfathers following the paths the grandfathers walked, walked since the days when the animals were big and the old ones hunted the stiff-legged bear. With joyful greetings, they come together, together to give thanks. Nicomo. The men cut poles and set them in the earth, bend them over and bind them tight, bind them to make the Kunakamuk, the great lodge that will hold the people, the people who come together, together to give thanks. Nicomo. The women cover the poles with bark and line them inside with fine woven mats, mats to make the Kunakamuk beautiful, mats to keep it snug and dry, Fires are lit to keep the people warm and to cook the food that the people will eat. Venison and turkey the people will eat, and beans and squash and clams with good, thick nasamp puddings and sweet cakes of berries and corn. With prayers of thanksgiving, the people will eat. Nicomo. Women cook and talk and laugh while children run and tumble. Men gather in a gaming arbor to play at games of chance, holding tight their thunderbolts, cheering as the stones are tossed. Others compete in games of skill, like spear the disc or tug of war. In time, the games grow lively and loud, lively and loud and full of fun. The women and children join in. Nicomo. When the day grows old and sun rests on the shoulders of the western hills, the sweat lodges are prepared. Into the Pesaponk, the people go, leaving their clothes at the door. Wearing only the raiment the Creator gave them, the people enter in. Close in a sacred circle, they sit to talk and smoke and sweat, to be made pure of body and pure of spirit, the people sit and sweat. Nicomo.
Now out of the lodges the people run. Into the river they plunge. The water pricks like needles of ice, burns like tongues of fire, washing away every impurity, making the people strong. Now the people's bodies glow. Their spirits are at peace. One by one, they drift away. Soon the dance will begin. Nakomo. The people anoint themselves with oil. They comb and dress their hair. From Katantawit's sacred palette, they choose colors to paint their skins. The creator's sacred colors they choose. Miskwi, Wasawi, Maui Suki, Earth Red, Sun Yellow, Night Black. Nakomo. In garments of deerskin, the people dress in fine turkey feather capes. Their best moccasinists they put on their feet. Wampampig belts ring, belts ring their waists. With Katantowicz jewels, they adorn themselves. The creator's sacred jewels, bright feathers, dyed quills, gems of stone, claw, and bone, beads of shining shell. Nicomo. Now Moon Sister wakes and draws her star blanket across the sky. Beneath the blanket, the people come together into the sacred circle. With glad hearts and prayers of thanksgiving, the people come, bearing gifts so that widows may eat and orphans grow strong because all belong. All belong to the sacred family of the people. Nakomo. Drums speak in stirring beats and the people lift their voices in song. Joyful songs of thanksgiving, soft songs of love, sad songs of longing for those who are gone. Songs of war, songs of peace, songs of living and dying and living again, living again in the great house of Katantuit. Nakomo. Moving in circles, the people dance, feeling Earth Mother's heart beat beneath their feet. Quick dances of joy they dance, whirling and twirling and stomping. Bold dances of war they dance, shrieking and howling and leaping. Slow dances of love they dance, rhythmically swaying and stepping. Young people cast shy glances as they pass. Firelight flickers in their eyes and turns their skin to gold. Katantowit's sacred firelight shines upon the people. Nakomo. Old ones nod with lidded eyes. Small ones sleep in loving arms. Moon Sister creeps across the sky and the people dance on. Up up into the night their voices rise, gathered by brother wind and carried to the ears of the creator. Thank you, Katantawit, the people cry. Thank you for your love. In his great house in the southwest, Katantawit smiles. He hears the prayers of his children and holds them in his heart. Peace, my children, he whispers, and the people dance on. Nakomo. The end. I'm gonna read you the author's note on this one. Even though there are no pictures, I still think it's important to hear it. You know what I, I think you should do is probably try to find someone from the Narragansett tribe to read this book because I'll bet they'll do a much better job than I did. Long before the first pilgrims set foot in the New World, Native Americans were celebrating rites of Thanksgiving, 13 a year in fact, one for each lunar month. In addition, several times a year, larger celebrations were held. 
celebrations that were both religious and social in nature. On these occasions, feasting, gaming, and dancing accompanied the religious ceremonies. Nicomo was the name given by the Narragansett Indian tribe of present-day Rhode Island to these celebrations. A Nicomo might be small, with just a couple of villages coming together, or large, with thousands coming from far and wide. The largest Nokomos were usually held in the fall to celebrate the harvest, and in the winter to break the boredom of that cold, harsh season. These feasts take their name from the word Nokomo, which means giveaway or exchange. During the feasts, a giveaway dance was held. People would give away any extra food, furs, clothing, etc. that they might have accumulated. These gifts were distributed by the sacum, king, to widows, orphans, or any who were in need. In Narragansett society, the more a man gave away, the more highly he was respected. Hmm. The first Thanksgiving of the Pilgrims of Plymouth was actually more like the traditional Native American harvest Nokomo than like the holiday we celebrate today. Held out of doors, it lasted for three days and included gaming, feasting, and contests of skill. Through history books, though history books have traditionally credited the pilgrims with initiating the first Thanksgiving, it is obvious that the Native people contributed richly to the event. Although the Native American words in this story are from the Narragansett language, the celebration they depict is much like celebrations held all over New England before the white man came and in many places long after. The Native American powwow of today is descended from this type of celebration. The fact that Native American people do dance on today, despite hundreds of years of overt and covert attempts by the United States government to usurp their lands and their native identities is a tribute to the tenacity and deep spirituality of America's indigenous peoples. It's time for bed. <laughs> Good night. Sleep tight. Auntie Kiki loves you.